Patsy here. Welcome to the Steven Universe panel. Yeah, let's hear for the room upgrade. Uh, do we have any newcomers here? Last year we can only fit 2,800 and this year we have 5,000? Yeah! All right. Um, if you guys don't know, I voice Peridot, everybody's favorite, Claude. So why don't we get this panel started, yeah? All right. First up, we have the creator and executive producer of Steven Universe, Rebecca Sugar. Next up, we have the voice of Garnet. Let's hear it for Estelle. Looking so sick in her jumpsuit. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let's bring out the voice of Amethyst, Michaela Dietz. Yeah. And last but not least, we have the beautiful voice of Pearl, Dee Dee Magno Hall. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, Zach Callison couldn't make it today to San Diego Comic-Con, but he does have a special message for you guys. Hey guys, it's Zach. I play Steven. Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys all for being here and apologize for not being able to be there myself. I'm about 10,000 miles away today, unfortunately, but I wanted to be here in spirit to announce things about the movie and celebrate it with you guys and share how hyped I am about it because it's, it's really special to me, Rebecca, and the rest of the cast and crew. So thanks for being here and enjoy. Uh, we miss you, Zach. All right, a lot has happened since we've been here from last year. I want to jump right on into it and talk about the January finale, Change Your Mind. Yeah. Wow. All right, the first question is towards the cast. Um, what has the response been to the finale since it's aired, and how does it see, and how does it feel to see the fans react to so many story developments? Who wants to start, Dee Dee? Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll start. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, the only thing that I that comes to my mind about change your mind is uh, that meme. You know that meme. If you've said, you know what a meme is. Okay. So that meme where where Stephen says she is ah, and then it goes that. Oh no, I'm sorry. It starts out with um, <laughs> it's over, isn't it? <laughs> Pearl singing It's Over, and she says, and she loves you, and she's, and then Stephen says, she's gone. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. That comes to my mind. <laughs> I, I guess for me it was uh, the Amethyst line where she's like, what? Like, <laughs> it just blew my mind. Uh, but it's been such a, I don't know, a pleasure to see everyone in on, on these secrets that we've kept in for so long. So, uh, yeah, I guess a little bit of relief. It's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sets it up for what's to come. So... Yeah. Ooh. Which is the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know... Uh, for me, my favorite part of the finale was when Peridot and Lapis and Bismuth come in on the, the hand ships, mm -hmm. yeah. and then one of the, the thumbs falls off, and Peridot's like, who needs thumbs? That was a great one. That was, and let's, okay, the fusions blew my mind. Let's talk about obsidian. Like, so that's my favorite part of the finale. Can you guys... Can you guys share a couple ditties on your favorite parts of the finale? Yeah, I like Sunstone's pants. Yeah. yeah. I, I keep saying this. Everyone was, I was like, Sunstone is the greatest. And then I posted a picture of myself in some jean shorts and they were like, Sunstone. I was like, okay. Uh, I guess I'm Sunstone this way. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 uh, I loved when Stephen was hugging at himself, that moment. That yeah. was such a beautiful moment. And then on Twitter, everyone was like, James Baxter! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that reference. <laughs> Can we talk about the fashion sense of White Diamond here? Did anybody check out her heels? How sick oh. were her heels? And her nails and her lashes? 
Hashtag fashion week, White Diamond. Hello. She needs like her own fashion line, no? Yeah. Who, who, who designed that? Oh, gosh. I, well, I mean, our, our designer, Alison Ramillis, worked on that a lot. I also worked on it with Colin Howard, our designer. But, uh, the shoes, I, I did a bunch of roughs of the shoes specifically. She, I mean, she's literally put herself on, a, on pedestals. Yeah. Like her, her, that's what her... <laughs> As if she's not tall enough. Yes. <laughs> Well, since I have you on the mic, Rebecca, um, we had some Twitter questions come out. We crowd crowdsourced some questions, and you ready to answer these? Would you like me to read them in Peridot's voice for you? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I figured, why not? We're here, right? All right. First question is, how did Lapis and Bismuth become such good friends so fast? I just thought it was interesting since I was under the impression that Bismuth was the one who poofed her before. <laughs> oh, well, well Peridot would know also that it's almost, it would be impossible not to become best friends with Bismuth instantly. She's the best friend anybody could ever ask for. I'll tell her that. <laughs> um, but also, uh, Lapis was, didn't get a really good look at who poofed her, and, and Bismuth poofed many, probably many homeworld Lapises over the course of the war. I think that the, really the thing with Lapis, not to diminish being poofed, which is, which is terrible, but she was picked up by Homeworld Gems and then put in a mirror and interrogated for information about the Crystal Gems. So Lapis has had it very hard, but it's, it's difficult for her to know where to direct her anger because she was treated like a Crystal Gem by Homeworld Gems. So she, she has no one really to, to trust. Now that she's finally, like actually is a Crystal Gem, uh, she has support and, and a home and a family like she hasn't had since, since that happened so long ago, and that's really important to her. Yeah. Whew. That's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for answering that. Peridot would be proud. Peridot would be proud of you, Rebecca. <laughs> Next question. Um, did Sardonyx know about Pink Diamond's true identity since Pearl was technically a part of her? Ah, uh, well, something to understand about fusions is that they are their own individuals. They're a, they're a manifestation of the relationship between characters. Uh, I'd say the, the, the most human equivalent would be a kid. Uh, so whatever Garnet and Pearl shared within their relationship, uh, or whatever they would share with their kid is like what Sardonyx would know. Sardonyx is her own person. Mm. Uh, so in this case, no, that's not something that Pearl was able to share with Garnet. So that's not something that they would be able to share with Sardonyx or that Sardonyx would be able to know? That's a great question. Wow. Last question from Twitter. Was Pearl made for our pink or did she belong to white? Dun, dun, dun. Um, Pearl, our Pearl never belonged to white, but white is involved in the creation of pearls in general. So there's there is a connection, um, and that's all I can really say at the moment about mm -hmm. that. Hashtag no spoilers. Let's talk about Steven Universe the movie. <laughs> Question, what has been the most rewarding and challenging thing about working on the movie? And this question is for all the panelists, uh, well, including myself. For me, uh, I, it's a lifelong dream to get to make a movie musical. And that mixed with the dream I've already been living of working with such incredibly talented musicians and artists, it's just been an incredible process the whole way through. So I'm so excited for people to start to see what we've been working on for these last few years. Well, it's an honor to work with you, Rebecca Sugar. Oh, just, uh, you know, just yeah. no biggie. An honor and a dream come true. Um, uh, I'm just excited that it's going to be longer than 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, the emotions that you make us feel in 11 minutes, so I'm excited for what happens with more time. Um, I would say one of the most rewarding things in recording the movie has been seeing everybody. Um, you know, 
I just I just love to work, and I feel like this show has um, I think taught all of us how to embrace imperfection or embrace what maybe other people see as flaws. And I feel like it's just a very supportive environment. And um, yeah, you guys just make me smile. <laughs> so and the challenge is like not saying anything or getting fired. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everything they said. Um, and also just like learning more working on the music with Rebecca. You see how incredibly talented she is and the team are at making music, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Woo, yeah. That's how we feel every time we get a new song. Pretty much. I don't do that, but in the general frame of things. <laughs> so no, it's been it's been great, and I see more of these guys um, when we've been recording. So it's been cool. It's been cool. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm also a dancer. So what was really cool um, to kind of no spoilers, I got to kind of do a little ditty here and there, and do a little foley here and there um, for the movie, which is kind of neat. So. Uh, that wasn't a spoiler, right? I'm, I'm, I'm still cool? Cool? Okay. Yeah, you, yeah you're good. Also, without giving away any spoilers, um, what was your initial reaction to the story development of the characters, what happens with no spoilers? You can all, I had an idea. Why don't you give your favorite word? You could say, your, imagine a tree. It could be a thing or a color. That way we don't okay. say any spoilers. Right? Uh, Bolero. Oh, Bolero, that's a good one. You'll understand when you see the trailer, possibly. <laughs> Mine was, I feel like it's like redaction, redaction, reda I don't know. I, I feel like there's so <laughs> many ways I could go here, but just general like exclamation points all over. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a wise woman right here. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Mine is the emoji with, with the mind blown, you know, that mushroom cloud? That's, that's the only way I can say how I feel about the storyline without saying any spoilers. Um, <laughs> I don't think mine answer made any sense. No. But it, it's, okay. it's okay, you it's are okay. enough. No, but the bolero and the colors, I think I know where you're leaning towards. Do you guys, <laughs> do you guys want to see the first trailer for the Steven Universe? <laughs> present to you the first trailer for the Steven Universe movie. Woo! Oh, when a difficult day goes by. As much as I've loved dismantling the Empire and saving all your planets, I can't wait to get home and spend some quality time with my friends. I want everything to stay exactly like this and never change. Agreed. This morning, everything was perfect. Why did everything have to change? I want my happily ever after back. <laughs> she brought this thing here to kill me. We're dealing with 41 hours until the destruction of all organic life on Earth. All organic life? Yeah, like the animals, the plants, the insects. You know, people. <laughs> It's the truth, it's the truth, it's the truth, kind of love, it's the truth, it's the truth, it's the truth, kind of love. put in words how we felt about the story developments because of oh. that right there, right? You understand. You understand where we were coming from, right? <laughs> so Steven Universe the movie will premiere September 2nd, Ooh. and I can even tell you what time, 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. On Cartoon Network. 
so Rebecca, this movie is a musical. Um, is it different writing the music for the show, um, different than writing the music for the movie? How, and, and if it was, how so? Oh, absolutely. Well, there were some episodes of the show that were actually sort of secret practice for doing this movie. Uh, Mr. Greg was a chance to see if we could have a, a full musical episode, and we managed to get seven songs into 11 minutes. Wow. Uh, we were able to get more songs into this. Uh, and for Just One Day, Let's Only Think About Love, that was also, we, we already knew we were going to work on this. So we were just like, can we, can we do a big number uh, all of us were really sort of just testing our limits with that, yeah. gearing up for this. So, uh, but this is a completely different uh, just challenge to be able to make something so full and complete to integrate the story into all of the music and um, to just get to... Oh, I, I, I can't say anything else. <laughs> I really, we've worked so hard on this movie. Yes. I just cannot wait for people to see it. It's been such a feat. And my composer is Ivy and Sarashu, yeah. who uh, <laughs> couldn't be here today because we're, we're working so hard right, right now to get this done. Um, they've just done such an unbelievably amazing job mm -hmm. on the music through the, through the whole thing and I've had the chance to work with all these incredible collaborators uh, yeah 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 <laughs> do you want to spill this this tea and, and then you don't have to spill any other cool okay um Estelle I hear that you well I heard your voice in the trailer what? you wrote you wrote a song for the movie yeah um, yeah you like it can you talk about that experience and how that came along? And well, there's one day I was just sitting in my house, and uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, we they they started working on the movie, and we were talking about. I guess Rebecca Corden was asking about records, and you know, like and how we should approach it, and it was a vibe. And they, they she went off and she wrote a record, and I went and wrote some records, and we wrote some records together, and. This isn't one of them, the, one, the true, but, but I sang it. It's really good. <laughs> but we, we have other records. It, it's, it's a good time, man. I'm just happy with everything and how it sounds. That sounds so cute. Yeah, I, that song that there's a little bit of in the, in the trailer, yeah. Um, yeah, we met up to talk about it. I was, I was, pitching, uh, I was pitching you the story, and, yeah. and we were starting sort of really, really early draft of it together, which yeah. was so awesome. And I love... Estella is so amazing. Like, we'll, we'll talk before a lot of the songs, before Stronger Than You, you mm -hmm. gave me all these awesome references, and same with Here Comes a Thought. So he, here we actually got to really sit down and start working on this together. Um, and then that song, I ended up going out to Chicago, and I wrote, I finished writing it um, with Chance the Rapper yep. and with Macy Stewart. Yep. Uh, and that was just, I, I mean, it completely opened my mind to what could be it's sort of possible with music. I, I heard it and it blew my mind. I was just like, oh my goodness, this is, this is, this makes me just feel like, ah, all the words, all the feelings. <laughs> um, and I, again, everyone knows I love the way that Rebecca writes. It, it's perfect. It was beautiful. It is beautiful. And I'm just grateful to be able to do it. Thank all right. You. Moving on to probably your favorite part, uh, the Q&A. So let's have, our, do we have lines already um, set up for the Q&A? Please walk safely. Um, we ask that you keep your questions and statements to under a minute so that we can get as many questions answer, answered as possible. So let me know with um, a nice hand wave when you're ready you guys are for our first question. <sighs> you can find that on... Dee Dee Magno Hall's Twitter, the official <laughs> Magno Hall. All right. Sorry. Little selfie moment. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hey. So, I have a two-parter. Now that there are more uncorrupted gems on Earth, are we going to see more gem-human relationships? Also, we've seen Pearl and Greg kind of confront their feelings uh, with the loss of Rose. Are they ever going to try to find love again? Oh, gosh. Oh. That's what? <laughs> <laughs> These are spoiler questions, fam. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, 
I'm, I'm trying to think of what's safe to say. Gems, gems and humans will certainly be doing a lot of interacting, and there um, are definitely a lot of new uncorrupted gems on Earth, and I'm excited for people to sort of see where that goes. Um, in terms of Pearl and Greg, oh, I think it's really important for Pearl to be very independent for a while. She got out of a, of a very, very, very long um, like love relationship, and she's really finding herself at the moment, so uh, I've really been enjoying showing that side of her, Pearl's independence. Yeah. <laughs> After you ask your question, if you and, and we answer it, you can come down to the front and grab a prize. Ooh. Next question. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Thanks. Hello. Um, I'm Mauro. Um, Mindful Education is one of my favorite episodes. Thank you. Um, thank you for the show. Um, can you talk more about Stevani and Amethyst's journey so far, like figuring themselves out, their growth, empowerment, parallels? Stevani and Amethyst? Gosh, well, they're they're coming from very different places in in their development, um, so I'm not sure where to start. Uh, I mean, Stevani becomes more and more solid and, and independent all the time. I think, as as of course, as as I said earlier, like parents, as their parents become sort of more together, uh, Stevani benefits from that as well, um, as all any kid would. <laughs> uh, and, gosh, Amethyst, well, Amethyst is in so much growing. I think what Amethyst really needed was a, was a full understanding. Amethyst had the kind of upbringing where she was very sheltered from her own origins, and, and that was meant well by the Crystal Gems, by Rose, I think Rose especially, loved the thought of someone having no idea what Homeworld's rules are, and never, ever, ever having to know. But I think it's been really helpful for Amethyst to understand that and get to form her own opinion about it, which was really denied her for so long. It's cool. you, do you want to say anything about that? Oh, <laughs> no, I mean, for me personally, I think, uh, I guess the biggest turning point for her was going back to Homeworld and meeting other Amethysts. And I'm a Korean American adoptee, and while that was happening, I was uh, searching for my biological family in Korea. So I could definitely relate to that. And I think, you know, just seeing where where me, Michaela Dietz, was born um, and who my people are, I think that really uh, helped me, you know, be more me. Um, and, and feel more complete, I think, much like, you know, Amethyst felt. So, yeah. Hi, my name's Alex, and I was wondering, like, for everybody on the panel, who you think you'd be able to fuse with? Like, anybody in, like, the cast and crew? <laughs> who, oh. <laughs> Be able to, like, be capable? <laughs> yeah, like, who do we want to make babies with? No, like... <laughs> Wait, what? I'm who you're, so like, confused. best friends with, yeah. like, oh. vibe, and you're, like, really close. Well, we all, we all have relationships with each other, so I think those relationships could all become uh, people if we could imagine them. But honestly, the characters have become so... Uh, clo like, they've been so inspired by... Yeah. You actually, now as I've gotten to know you over the years, that I think the fusions in the show are, uh, many of them are how I, f the way I feel excited to be with you yeah. and, be, and work with you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ditto. So maybe one of those big like composite quartzes, I guess, where like everybody's just, it's like a party rock, you know? Everybody's just in there. <laughs> it's like an everything pizza. Yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah. Just find Sriracha. one giant just, uh, telephone yeah. booth and everybody just jam on in there and become one big fusion. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know what a telephone booth is? <laughs> a rotary with a rotary phone and You. <laughs> Dee Dee's somebody's mom for real. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, uh, hi. My name is Alika. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks for making this show. I struggled with anxiety issues and self-confidence, but this show has definitely helped me grow as a person. Awesome. Also, thank you. It, that's not necessary. It's it's fine. But um, okay. the main question, and you don't have to tell me if it actually happens, but. Is Stevani capable of fusing with other gems? Like some tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think. <laughs> well. Oh gosh, how do I? Even... I just wanted tea. Estelle is so uh, thirsty. <laughs> I was just, is I. Uh, she's parched. Stevani. Well, Stephen. Stephen is capable of. Fusing with humans and gems, so it would make sense for for Stevani, who has Stephen's gem, to be similarly capable. But Stevani is such an individual. I think that um, they don't need anybody but themselves. Good answer. Good yes. answer. Hi, my name's uh, Lizzie. And my question is for the whole cast. What is your favorite ship? <laughs> oh, 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 me, 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 me. <laughs> the, the, um, the one that uh, Sour Cream's dad, that yellow tails, sails on. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Royal Caribbean, but I would love to try the Disney cruise ship sometime. <laughs> All the ships. <laughs> All the ships. They're great. <laughs> um, I'm pretty partial to Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah. So. <laughs> if, if I haven't made that abundantly clear in the, in the show, then I think I've done something <laughs> yeah. wrong. I said it real loud. So is Ruby and Sapphire's ship named Garnet? They don't, it's, it's not like, uh, what would it be, Sapphire and Ruby? Sir Ruby? What is, what is it? Fire! Fire! Fire? What? Fire! Okay. All right. So there is a ship name. That's what ships are, right? You take you take the first half of a name and the second half of a name, and then you put them together, and that's what a ship is called. Yeah. yeah. But it's Garnet. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's Garnet, guys. I'm glad you guys came up with that ship name, but it's Garnet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Hi, my name is Dino, and I was wondering if there's any. Um, <laughs> fusions got, got that we'll be seeing in the seasons or movie that we haven't seen before. That's a really good question. That is a good question. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I can. <laughs> it's hashtag no spoilers. We could talk about fusions that we've seen. Uh, don't do it. My favorite fusion is Obsidian. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give it up for Obsidian. Yes. Mind blown with that one. Um, that's a good one. There were so many fusions in, in the finale. Yeah. Uh, Sunstone was one of them. Um, obsidian. Smoky Quartz. Yes. Woo! Yeah. What, what, which other fusions am I missing? Opal came Rainbow Quartz 2.0. Oh. Yes, I'm missing a bunch of fusions. So if we were going to spill what the next fusions possibly could be, we would be fired. So... <laughs> Um, we can talk about current fusions. I just, I will say that's just, it's a really good question. It is a, it's a great question. <laughs> and you'll just have to watch the movie, right? And please watch, yes, please watch the movie for the answer to that question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll get answered loudly. You just loudly. have to wait a little bit more to find out the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank September you. September 2nd, 6 p.m. Yeah. Our two network. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Jasmine. 
What is, if you were to be one of any gem or fusion, who would it be and why? Oh, <laughs> other than the one that we, we voice? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sorry. Could you please repeat the question? You mean other than the one we voice, right? Uh, that, uh, yes. is, is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? She said yes. Oh, uh, Thumbs up. So you're talking about? Right, there you go. I always say Peridot. <laughs> Just be like a high-pitched version of myself. Yeah. <laughs> sarcastic and just rude and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Parada. I can't see. She I'm honored. Break. She's honored. Par- yeah. Paradot's honored. I can't. She's get that hot. I think a diamond. Mm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure which one, but a diamond. It's my birthstone, so oh, I... Oh, it is? Yeah. That's so fun. That's I, I would say maybe like pearl because I've had so much of amethyst experience maybe voicing pearl would help me like Marie Kondo my life yeah. you know <laughs> sort of like toss yeah. out some things you know what sparks joy sparks some joy yeah. You know? uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I'll help you with that uh-huh. I would say white diamond that just occurred to me right now because she has fierce nails and eyelashes and great fashion sense. <laughs> I'm really stuck on these heels. I can't stop yeah. thinking about them. Like, I actually want a pair of white diamond heels. So if anybody can make that happen, <laughs> yeah, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so white diamond for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I put a lot of myself into, into Ruby. So that definitely, Ruby is the one that's me. <laughs> no? <laughs> Anyway, thank you. Hello, um, my name is Diego. I'm a really big fan of the series. I just like to ask for us, for Steven, he looked like he aged a little bit. Like, why do you think that he is now a physical 14 year old in the movie? Um, yeah, well, uh, in the movie, uh, Steven is 16 years old. Uh, the movie is two years in the future. <laughs> uh, so he's had some time, but I also think that because of the events of Change Your Mind, because of what he's come to understand about himself, he's able to grow in a way that he <laughs> wasn't before. You can just send me those glosses when you're done. They're very... Estelle, I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much for voicing Garnet. You just, you embody her. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my question is for Rebecca. So I heard in a per- uh, podcast that um, you fought for the wedding episode to be aired. So that's the reason why you wrote Change Your Mind. Why was Change the Mind not in the wedding episode and the final episode? Ah, well, the, the fight for the wedding was not just for it to air, but for it to be made at all. Uh, it went all the way back to 2015, 2016. Um, that song, I think I, I kept it, it was a personal song, so I wasn't expecting to write it into the show. And um, there was, let's see, I'm trying trying to think. It was when we got to the end of Change Your Mind that I really felt the need to share it because it was so much the conclusion I'd come to personally after going through everything. I suppose I waited until the last moment of the show to share it, but... um, Within the wedding itself, I, I, oh gosh, <laughs> That's, it's a really good question. <laughs> I hadn't, it wasn't, I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready yet <laughs> to share it. Um, but yeah, it, it was the whole process of making that over all those years that made me able to 
to do, I think, change your mind as a whole. And then change your mind, I think, may, has made us able to do, we used to call it the movie before the movie, internally on the show, because change your mind was so much work. It was it's a 44, it was the longest thing we'd ever made. And we didn't even quite get to feel great about it because we were we jumped into something even longer immediately after so we were like right. we did it let's do this thing that's <laughs> literally twice as hard um and you know and a musical uh so those the the wedding change your mind means so 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 much to me um and the movie does too i really hope you'll check it out <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Roque. Uh, my question is for Rebecca. Um, down at the booth, in the karaoke booth, and there are two flags. There is already some buzz about it online. I wanted to know if you could talk about them a little bit. Yes, there's a flag for Earth and there's a flag for Homeworld. That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I wanted to know when you decided to create a children's show, Rebecca, and everyone was a part of the children's show, that you had any idea you would impact as many adults? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I love animation. I never grew out of it. So I completely understand why adults can and do love cartoons because I'm an adult that loves cartoons so much. Um, I also think, you know, I never got to have a show like this as a child, and, and I think for me, having a show like this that exists for children uh, means something to me as an adult. It's like I get to retrofit nostalgia for something that I was never able to have and that means a lot to me too so I completely understand and appreciate really uh, just anyone of any age that loves animation I just think you're right <laughs> hi my name is Carly um, firstly, Rebecca Sugar, thank you so much for creating a space and media for non-binary people so that <laughs> yeah. this thank you. means a lot. Um, my question for everyone on the stage is if your character was born as a human in any year or on any place on the globe that you want, what do you think they would be like? I think that Pearl would be a lot like me, I guess. <laughs> I feel like uh, maybe Amethyst would be in the 80s, like bouncing between jazzercise classes and like metal shows. <laughs> That's my final answer. <laughs> Do you want some tea? <laughs> <clears throat> That's hard. Um, I don't know, bro. If Garnet could be any human person in today's world, oh, that's hard. <laughs> I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think really quickly and I can't, hold on. Um, <laughs> who are? You think she'd be Beyonce? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, that was a good one. <laughs> She might be Queen B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> and Peridot would be one of your backup dancers. <laughs> For sure. We need like 12 or 1500 Peridots at any time. Yeah. I'm with it. That could be cool. That yeah. could be cool. All playing different instruments. Ooh. <laughs> Grace Jones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And if you don't know who Grace Jones is, Google. 
She would be Grace Jones. Grace Jones, yes. yes. I think Peridot would be living in a silver bullet under the foliage of Costa Rican jungle. Um, and the silver bullet can also levitate and she could go anywhere she wants. And if she's in North America, uh, uh. she drives her silver bullet cross country. This detail? Yeah. That's what Peridot as a human would be doing on Earth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she's clearly thought about that. I, I had a little bit of time. <laughs> Right, good to meet you guys. It's yeah, my first time at Comic Con. Yeah. Well, first up, it's good to meet you all. It's a privilege. Honor. I've been following the show since the very beginning. You know, any advice for a young, inspiring artist who has part autism? It's been a very hard journey for me. I want to finally fulfill my animation dreams. You know, you guys are my animation heroes since the very beginning. Thank you. Aww. Oh, and. Oh, and, and actually, I haven't told anyone about this, but actually, for our old Comic Con, I've been wearing Steven Universe socks. Actually, I'm wearing <laughs> Ruby and Sapphire today. Yay! Oh, oh nice. Ew. Ew. Well, my advice would be to just make stuff right away as soon as possible. The moment that you're making art, you're no longer an aspiring artist, you're just an artist. So do it, make it right now. Yeah. Do you hear that, Caden and Ashley? Sorry, shout outs. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you for um, just creating the show in general. It's helped a lot of people, including me, with what I identify as. Um, my question to um, Rebecca, I guess, would be, um, when you were first were creating the show, what did you struggle with the most? Oh, man. Um, there's, there's so much, it's just so, it's really difficult to put together a television show. There's just so many moving parts. And I think one of my biggest challenges is that I want to be involved in everything. I want to be involved in the story. I want to be involved in the music. I want to be involved in the sound design, in the sound effects, in the, in the color. Uh, so for me, one of the biggest challenges is just running from department to department to weigh in on absolutely everything. And, uh, and there's just not enough time in the day. Uh, and then also hoping early on, I think one of the most scary things was we had a really long story we wanted to tell and we didn't know at that time if the show would be well received, uh, how long it was going to last. So it was like, how do we, how do we tell this expansive story how do we, that we knew we wanted to last for years and years and years without knowing if it might end any, at any moment and holding out hope for all these characters. That was also a challenge. And, um, I'm just really, really grateful that we're here and we've come so far with the story, come this far with the story and that we have this other story waiting in the wings for people to see. Thank you. And despite, yes, I think Rebecca is one of the most hardest working people that I've ever met. Um, whenever we record and go in, she still asks us, how are you? How's our personal life doing? And it blows my mind every time. I'm like, I texted her the other day when I was doing some Foley, no spoilers. And I, and I recorded it on my phone and I sent it to her and I'm like, oh, she's probably so busy doing a record and you know, doing everything. Within two minutes, she gives me notes. And I'm like, what is she doing? Do you have time to get a drink of water or have time for yourself? Is it only like this four hours that you sleep? Do you sleep? Do you sleep at all, Rebecca Sugar? I sleep, I sleep. Sleep is very important. Everybody who draws, you, like you will get more, I'm telling you this, so, I'm so serious. You will get more work done if you get a full night's sleep than if you work really long hours but you didn't get a lot of sleep. I learned that the hard way. Yes. Um, you know, if, if it's really uh, romantic to like destroy yourself for your art, but the art will suffer. If you <laughs> suffer, the so, art will suffer. Yep. So please take care of yourself. Yes. Yeah. We have time for one last question. So the stage is yours. Thank you so much for creating the show, Rebecca Sugar. I, I would just like to ask. What are some of the biggest inspirations for the show? The biggest one. The biggest one? Yeah. Should I really, uh, maybe I'll say it. Well, 
When I was a kid, I used to watch Tenchi Universe on Cartoon Network. <laughs> And the show is early. The show, the title of the show is actually a was a temp title. It was like it's like my brother Steven and Tenchi Universe, <gasps> Steven Universe. And uh, and then we never changed it because we all got really attached to the name, <laughs> and it became his name. And that was a, that was a big influence. Although although Steven is not Tenchi, uh, <laughs> Greg is Tenchi. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your questions. We have one more goodie for you. Should we just, should we just roll it? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's roll it. I knew that if I were going to write something different, I needed to be somewhere different or do something different. So I thought, I just want to go somewhere and be alone and think a little bit about how I'm feeling. And I was running out of time. It was like this race against the clock because I had to start writing the music as soon as possible, mm -hmm. but I couldn't write the music until the story was approved. We are doing something that's so much more cinematic. New locations, new characters. It's a, definitely a team effort. That's what makes it good. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Here we are in the future. What I love about working with a team is that we all have really different perspectives on the stories that we tell. The music is so important to the show. I write songs specifically for my cast members, and I like to ask them what kind of music that they like so that I'm writing things that they're excited to sing. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> it's so good, it's so fun. What do you think, Lion? <laughs> you strong to fix teeth. I'm sure. I wanted to go somewhere, but okay, that's like big. It's just so cool. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that made me emotional. <laughs> Shout out to the Steven Crooniverse, they're the best Crooniverse in the world. And such good people, like, you could just see it in, in the video, how much fun we have, and we're all, we're all friends. It's, it's crazy, <laughs> it's too much. But you can catch the full hour making of the movie behind the scenes documentary when the movie drops, um, when the movie releases on DVD and digital. So don't miss, we also have another, another fantastic gift here. Don't miss the Every Steven Ever weekend starting August 31st to September 2nd, Ooh. up until the movie comes out. So let's give it up for our panelists. Thank you so much for joining us here. We've had so much fun. Believe in Steven.